Oh, here's an interesting little, or interesting big business, I should say. Some kind of a plant nursery behind this fence. I only became aware of it because they have all these trees on the outside in their own little bags and pots, apparently uh, for sale. And then if you look over this fence, I assume you will see a uh, plant nursery of some kind. And lo and behold, there it is. Check this out, a bush shaped like a elephant, like an elephant. A whole bunch of them here. <laughs> well, how about a detour within a detour within a detour? Let's take a little walk through the nursery. Oh, it's very nice back here. And of course, you can really smell the flowers. And you can buy ornaments for your lawn. Ah, look at this burst of color. I'm not really a plant guy but these are really beautiful. And you get your succulents here, little tiny cacti. And they also sell a lot of uh, pots. And then looks like garden fertilizer and items like that, or even large, uh, large bags of fertilizer. Here in the back, whoa. Here in the back, we're getting into more of the taller plants, trees and shrubs. Wow, a little oasis right in the middle of Mesa. This is really nice. Check that out. Little pathways in between the rows of trees. This is really nicely laid out. And there's a hop in just in the background there. Hmm. It's like being in a city park or a garden, except that every plant you see around you is for sale. A little jungle trail heading through there. Ah, very cool. I talked about this once before that this kind of activity is one of the benefits of photography. I used to take a lot of pictures. I didn't shoot video, but because I was out taking pictures with my camera, if I came across a place that was interesting, I would uh, stop and explore it mainly because I wanted to take pictures. I wouldn't be, you know, super interested in it, whatever it was. So it left my own devices, maybe I would have walked right on by and I wouldn't have had the experience, for example, of coming in here. But because I'm shooting video, it gave me just that little extra push to go inside and look around and very glad I did. Look at that, they even have set up uh, little benches in here. I was just thinking that this nursery is so much like a garden or a park that they could even set up tables in here and serve coffee and cold drinks. You could come in here as a customer, sit down, have a coffee. And as you're sitting here drinking your coffee, you'd probably look around you and start thinking, huh, 
maybe I should buy some of these plants, bring some flowers back to my apartment or do some landscaping at my house and be very good business strategy. But what do I know? <laughs> Me talking about running a business, that's uh, it's pretty silly. I wouldn't have the first clue. This place is far larger than I ever imagined. They must do large commercial contracts. There's no way a place this big would just serve a random person in Mesot that drops in to buy some plants. Uh, there's uh, a path heading back to the road. That's just where I was. Take a short walk down this trail. <laughs> and they have a couple of trees that are definitely not for sale. They're not going to uh, uproot this bad boy, I don't think. I wonder if it was planted here to be for sale and then it just grew so large, it just became a tree that now grows here, like this one here as well. So you're not fitting that in the trunk of your car. With all of the visa activity in my life, the possibility now exists for me to be here in Thailand even over Christmas and New Year's with this new 60-day tourist visa that I've been hearing about. So that raises the question of if I'm here in, at Christmas, perhaps I could come here and pick up a pseudo Christmas tree for my room at the guest house. And in a strange way, this place can relate to what I've been talking about, maps and addresses, because I know that if I were running this place, I'd really like to know what plants are located where. I mean, here we have a giant field of this particular plant. And if someone puts in an order for 20 of these, you have to know where to go to get it. You got to keep a record somehow. So do they have a map of their own nursery with all the types of plants carefully marked? Do they do it on paper? Like look at these trees here. Clearly one specific type of tree and they'd probably have a record somewhere of these trees, what they are, how many they have, how tall they are, and how much they cost. A place like this would require a fair amount of record keeping. You couldn't just toss plants willy-nilly and hope you could find them later on. <laughs> you better keep clear uh, records. Look at those. Yeah, all individually potted. It's funny how I think in terms of podcasts so much these days. Every time I see something new and interesting, I think about which podcast this place would appeal to so i can see 99 percent invisible like roman mars coming here with his team and studying the design of this place because there are dozens of design elements you have to think about for this place is so interesting but one of my other favorite podcasts is planet money from npr and i can just imagine a team from planet money coming in here and learning about the economics of this place. How many employees they have and what the cost is of uh, maintaining this place and these trees and 
yeah, you could, uh, you could come at this place from so many different angles. I have all these questions in my head. I'd love to be able to find out, but of course, I don't have a team of researchers or translators to uh, talk to all the people here. Check these ones out. And beautiful green plants, a whole small field of them. And from the top, it just looks like a field of plants. And then of course, down at the bottom, you see that they're all individually wrapped for someone to take home. Oh, even the tree I'm leaning against, look at that. It's like a, a round drum of soil and roots. I wonder how heavy this is. Could, is it even possible to uh, pick it up? <laughs> not, a, not a chance. I suspect, however, that some roots have grown out of the bottom and are embedded in the ground because there's yeah, there's no way it's that heavy. I can't even budge it, but it, it's not that heavy. I think the roots are in the ground. So I was thinking, am I really that weak? It felt so immovable, but it's not that it's immovable. Well, it's not that I'm weak. It is immovable. It's planted now. <laughs> That's another side to this business I wouldn't have thought about until now. Do they have someone who's job it is is to constantly get a move around and move the plants so that they don't take root i mean every plant in here of course wants to break through its container and send roots down into the ground but if they all do that then it will become very difficult to remove them when they go to sell them so is that someone's job <laughs> constantly uprooting the plants and making sure that uh, they don't become permanent parts of the nursery Here's a uh, trolley, and that would clearly be used to carry around, you know, the heavier, the heavier plants. Amazing, I love this place. And I think another interesting aspect to places like this that perhaps, uh, a podcast like Planet Money would uncover, and this would be very different to a business in Canada, for example, is that I think a lot of the workers, the, the laborers that maintain this place, I'll bet they live right on the property. I spotted, like there's a house back there with some children and mother and father. There's a family living there. And at the other end of the trail, I ran into a little cluster of small houses. And they appear to be right on the property of the nursery. And my guess is that people that work here, laborers, part of their compensation is being allowed to stay for free or at a, at a reduced rate, rent, you know, low rent in one of these uh, little houses right on the property. So that's kind of interesting too. I think it's little touches like that that make so many businesses uh, possible because it keeps labor costs down and uh, perhaps a business couldn't uh, survive otherwise. Oh. So here we are back on the main trail. Oh, I cannot get enough of this place. Look at this, all tiny bamboo plants, I think. Are they bamboo? Yeah, they'd have to be some kind of bamboo. Another little pathway, bamboo on one side, little trees on the other. Oh, and some water plants as well. That's interesting. So I guess all these pots would have to be like buckets so that they hold the water and then they're growing water uh, lilies or anything like that. 
Oh, and a little bathroom back here. And this place makes me think of the hyacinth that is growing in all the rivers near here. I imagine these people would be experts on that plant, would know all about it. And I don't imagine they sell water hyacinth here. <laughs> I don't think people want to add more of it to the uh, river systems here. Well, let's head back out the uh, entrance. Oh, look at these bundles. I wonder what they're for. Oh, each bundle has um, a little a little bag on the bottom of each uh, limb with soil and a root system. And I guess maybe you buy this by the bundle and then you plant them all. Maybe make a fence out of them. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, and of course, there had to be coconut trees somewhere. So these are all coconut, the palms, the coconuts, and then each one, yeah, they allow it to sprout. I don't know if I've ever seen so many of them, little ones like this all in one spot at the same time. That's very cool. just heading out of the nursery. I've been looking around for a name of this place, but I haven't found it yet. But this m sign might be the name of the place. It has the uh, name and a phone number. Well, if anyone happens to be in Mesod and they want to find this place, it's kind of easy to do in a way. <laughs> a good landmark is the Hop Inn, and it's right on the main highway. Quite close to the Hop Inn. And as always, that's where you go to get to Tesco and the Friendship Bridge and immigration and the border with Myanmar is all in that direction. So, yeah, I've walked by this place probably a dozen times. I would have walked by this gate, but I didn't realize how much of interest was in there. Found another package waiting for me at my door, so a quick unboxing. I have to do this really fast because I have 5% left on my GoPro battery. Gotta beat that battery as it's uh, dying down. And this one is from Sukjai Fruit. And interestingly enough, it has my name in a different form. The other packages that were sent here were to Doug Nienheis, and this one is addressed to Douglas Nienheis. So I have no idea how all these companies suddenly got hold of my name and my current address where I'm staying. So that's one advantage to having an address. People can send you things and uh, that's what's been happening lately. So Sukjai fruit and it's got, you know, it's a small box, but it's got a little bit of heft to it. Let's see what's inside here. Suk Jai Fruits, thank you for shopping with us. This appears to be a, uh, a sticker. Maybe? Yeah, peels off. So if you're, I guess if you are a company of some kind, you could stick that somewhere. And, um, oh, <laughs> 
we're back into durian. Durian milk toffee, dried tamarind, fruits jelly, dried palm seed, and things like that. Oh, let's see what's in here. Oh. <laughs> oh. So some uh, fruit flavored candy of some kind. Doesn't have any kind of labeling on it, which is interesting. And another, look at that. Kind of, they look almost like homemade toffees. But again, there's no actual uh, labeling on that. One more. Whoa. Same basic uh, packaging, but a different kind of snack in there. And then three little ice, little um, like sugar cube shaped snacks. So this is, uh, yeah, this is what was inside, uh, inside that box. And as I said, one of them is durian milk toffee. I'm guessing that this is durian milk toffee. One of them is dried tamarind, a dried fruit, which I think is this one, dried tamarind. And then one more is the dried palm seed. And I'm guessing that this is dried palm seed. So there you are. <laughs> Snacks to uh, end the day here in uh, Mesot from Sukjai Fruits. This is the next day now. I didn't have a chance to try the candies when I opened up the box. So I thought I'd uh, turn on the camera and give these a taste. One of the things in the box was a set of uh, these three small little candies look like uh, sugar cubes and they're not on the uh, packing list. So I have no idea what they are. This is going to be a bit of a surprise. Kind of soft and uh, soft and gushy. Mmm. Coconut. Yeah, it's coconut flavored candy. That's really nice. Coconut is one of those things I, I don't think I want it. Like if I see a cookie or something with coconut shavings on the top, I think, mm, I don't want a coconut. But then when I bite into it, it's like, mmm. Yeah, that's a nice flavor. Yeah. Coconut, uh, like coconut sugar on the outside and then a chewy, chewy gel on the inside. It's really nice. I don't think the camera caught the uh, close up of that candy in focus. So here it is now in focus, the coconut flavored candy. And now let's try the durian milk toffee. I already got a box of durian flavored uh, candies uh, from a different company a few days ago. Let's see how this one compares. Oh, it looks really good. And there it is there, the durian milk toffee. Mmm, that is really nice too. You know instantly that it's durian flavored, but it doesn't have a strong durian flavor. Just enough to come across. Yeah, I like that a lot. The next one on my list is the dried tamarind fruit jelly. And I have a vague idea that a tamarind is a type of green leafy plant. But what the flavor of tamarind is, I, I couldn't possibly tell you. Hmm. The durian toffee, each one was individually wrapped, actually wrapped twice. There was the outer plastic and then there was a smaller piece of plastic around it. These ones are just completely free. I don't know. I'm not getting much uh, flavor at all from this one. If that's tamarind flavor, it's a very light flavoring.
Hmm. Nothing wrong with it. If you like lightly flavored candy, this is your, uh, your go-to. The last one on my list, these are dried palm seed candies. And these are the ones I'm most interested in. They just look so unusual. I have no idea what's going on here. I don't know what a palm seed is or what palm seed flavor is. Let's take one of these bad boys out. Wow. That's flavor. That is a flavor explosion. And it's really building too. Getting stronger and stronger. It's like in the back of my throat now. Mm. Yeah, the whole candy is just like dissolving in my mouth. And the more it's dissolving, the more the flavor is just bursting out of this thing. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> mm. Wow, that is something else. I don't think you'd be having a whole lot of these in a row. One of these is enough. Oh, you've got the flavor. Yeah, very strong flavor. Almost like a... I don't know how to describe it, but... Hmm, couldn't tell you, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's quite something. So there they are. The fruits in my uh, Sukjai package.